Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This time back with a hand analysis as I recently played some interesting hands on Tsuke and Elon Poker Stars. And we will start with the first hand where we open pocket 7s on the button, get free bet by a regular in the big blind, and get the 9 4 5 4 rainbow flop. And already we have the first decision point in the hand facing a 75% sizing. And I have to admit, part of the reason why I wanted to make this YouTube video was also to have an additional incentive to study the 75% sizing a bit more, because personally I use a smaller half pot sizing, so I'm often a bit confused what I should do versus the bigger sizing. In game, my thought process was I probably have to call most of my pocket pairs, like pocket 8's pure, pocket 3's and 2's probably can just fold, um, and sevens I would have called most of the time, and sixes I think I would have also called pure because sixes has connects more with the five and the four and therefore has more backdoor straights. So the thought like eight is a pure call, seven calls like eighty percent of the time or something, and yeah, three and those is pure faults. And then we still have to call a bunch of high cards, although I was also not quite sure how many of them. Like I was thinking ace ten suited, king jack suited plus for sure, but I was not sure if I have to defend hands like king ten suited, queen jack suited, uh, queen ten suited, those sort of holdings. So those were all interesting uh, things that I wanted to know about the spot. Anyway, I decided to press call, and the turn is the nine. So usually when the turn brings a board pairing card, you have to defend more pocket pairs if you face further aggression. Reason being is that we don't improve much on the turn. Sure, we hit some trips now, but trips are already top pair on the flop. But we don't make strong new, new strong hands. Like if the turn is a 6 or 7, we turn new sets. If the turn is a queen, we turn some ace queen that we floated. But on a bot bank turn, we just really don't improve much. So it's important that we defend quite wide with our um, pairs. And he decides to go for half pot. I think it could go either half pot or three quarters. But although half what is probably uh, the better sizing on the 9, I think. And in-game my thought process was that versus this sizing I, I cannot fold a single pair now, as if I floated the flop with a hand like king check in diamonds, king check in hearts, those hands would now fold. And even hands like ace-queen would... I mean, imagine a hand like ace-queen still has to call quite a bunch on the turn as well. But I think the folds come from the overcut region that we floated the flop with. So I decided to click call and of course create when you hit the dream river. And remember in-game thinking, <laughs> did I need it or was I, was I already good? Because if the river was like a free or, six or, or any blank, that's not like a king or a queen, I think you just always have to press call with, with a pair here, just because the SPR is so low and the main folds are just really going to be missed flush draws at this point. And it turned out <laughs> I really needed the 7 because he had trips and this scoop a nice uh, 4 points to clay pot. But yeah, that was my thoughts, but I have prepared a sim, so now let's go into that. So we see that if the 75% sizing he still has like a decent uh, seabed frequency. And versus that, we can see that I had some assumptions that were wrong. Like first of all, I said eight is a pure call, turns out to be wrong. And sevens also falls like half of the time already. So I was calling a bit too much here with the pocket pair region. But I mean, if you always fall threes and then always call eights, it's probably okay as well. Um, with the high cards, we can see a screen off floating half of the time, roughly. King Queen always folding, and then the suited hands are also defending quite aggressively. Like Queen Jack suited, I think I might have just, I'm not sure if I would have defended Queen Jack. Uh, King Ten suited also a hand that looks pretty borderline when you face the 75% uh, seabed sizing, so good to see that those hands are all defense. And also interesting to note is that we have some races here. I have brought up the sim with the 50% seabed sizing to compare the solutions. This is versus the 50% sizing. And we can see we raise a lot less, like basically not at all. And every pair has a call. So that's kind of the main difference between 
defending versus the 50% and the 75% sizing. Anyway, we click call and the turn was the 9. Which line was it again? 9 with the 4. And we face another half pot bet. Versus which we have to defend like every, basically every pocket pair. There's a small amount of folding going on, but I think just calling every pair here is fine. Uh, every pocket pair, I say. A hand like ace four, interesting, I don't think I would have uh, found the fold there. But yeah, the main folds just come from the missed uh, high card region. Ace queen still has to call it a lot on the turn. Even king queen gets in there a bit. But I think I would have uh, played the turn rather well. And then the river, of course, the Dream 7. He gets to jam with 10 plus, 8 plus even for value. And kind of like I said, we don't get to fold very much. Pocket 6, there's a tiny bit of folding going on with 6s. And 5 4 is 4. But for the most part, if you have a pair, you click call. And even random hands like ace check in spades that you have to call it that if you have called twice are now calling ace queen and clubs uh, sometimes goes for the hero call is king off so you really mainly fold your missed draw region so yeah that was hand number one thought that was quite interesting hand number two was also on 2k this time blind versus blind versus another regular you get the ace 9 7 um, two tone board and I've recently done some studying on this sort of textures and found out that for, if you bet 25% you get to bet more than you would think in those wide range scenarios so you can see that quite aggressive here and on the turn would be a 75% or check spot for me as um, the 10 8 straight gets there and the board gets very connected we are out of position so we can't really overbet the turn and check back the river. So I think you don't want to bet too big on this sort of turn and this deems A3 uh, a pure check. Now so far so standard. Facing the 75% uh, c-bet, I thought my hand probably has to pure call and then I also always have to call like every pair plus draw. But I was also interested in seeing like if we had overbet the turn, which would have also been a very valid strategy for imposition, how much we should call then with our hand, and how much we call with, yeah, with, with our range versus overbet versus 75. Like that's for me the main decision point that I was unsure of, that I want to review. Also, since I think I think on the turn I have a pure call. And now the five on the row is of course also pretty bad. Uh, six eight gets there. Some other hands make a, a five on the run, maybe give up. He goes for the overbet, which he could have a bunch of different sizings. I think they also needs an all-in sizing here, but 150% is fine as well. And of course, it's not a nice spot to call here with A3, but I remember in-game thinking, this is probably one of my better bluff catches, just because the ace blocks a lot of value in terms of like his most, his most common value hands, I think, for his sizing scheme are probably hands like is 9 is check is 7 sort of hands. So blocking the two-bell region is really, uh, is quite helpful. And the 3 is just a really nice unblocker. Like, he, he never gets there with a 3. He can't check call the flop with the, three, with the 3 in diamonds and then take this line as a bluff. So I think I would rather call here with a 3 than a 10, for example. Despite the 10 blocking some straights, it also blocks a lot of bluffs, so I think A3 is a pretty nice bluff catch here. And I went for the call, but unfortunately was not good this time. So let's look at the sim. Now as I already said, on the flop you have quite a high c frequency of 72%. Not quite a range bet scenario, but still a spot where you want to c most of the time got called and then we had the check in spades and there is some overbetting going on but I personally would just play a 75 or a check strategy here and we can see the low a6 don't really belong to the betting strategy at all 
and in position has two options here, like betting small is never is never a thing, doesn't really accomplish much. He could go for a 75 or already start over betting. And we will start looking versus the 75% um, at first, because that's the sizing that he chose. And versus that sizing, we can see like every ace has to call and also every pair plus draw is an easy call, even pocket eights, that is a pocket pair has to call and then you even have to call some queen check off, king check off. I'm not sure if I would have found those, like especially queen check off. I think I would have folded on the turn, to be fair. So yeah, important to not overfold. And versus the overbet, I was thinking that my hand probably can start mixing folds, but it has to mainly call. And yes, that seems to, that seems to work out. As the overbet, we get to start folding some ASAX, but still have to mainly call to not be too exploitable. And also our weaker pair plus draw type of hands get, are able to fold now, like 9-8, 10-9, but the stronger hands like check 10 uh, still get in there all the time. And anyway, we had the 75% sizing and the river was the 5. And all sizings make sense here for imposition. We can have a jam, a 75, 150% uh, sizing. And versus the bet, we can see we do have just a bluff catcher that yeah, can call a fold, doesn't really prefer either line too much. Interestingly, it does prefer to call S10 in theory. That's, uh, I would have said that S10 maybe is the a, is a worst call here. But yeah, that was like the main the main question I had about this hand was on the turn. On the river it's, it's like yeah you have a bluff catcher, you can call fold depending on if you think your opponent over plus or under plus, but the main decision point I thought was like, okay, how would the turn play if you bet 75? How would the turn play if you bet 150% sizing? And yeah, that was the main objective of this hand review. Facing a 75, you also mix with this hand. If it jams, now you can be a fold. Okay, so thanks guys for sticking with me. Uh, leave a comment if you find this sort of content interesting or if it's a bit too boring, if I go a bit off the rails sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, see you in the next one and have a nice day, bye.